Alexa, dog door open. Okay, so I've got the actuator replaced. Now I haven't actually um, uh, tried this yet. I've tried it a little bit, played with it a little bit on the bench, but I haven't tried it on the door yet. Uh, I played with it when uh, manually opening it before everything was connected. Uh, this is the actual solenoid valve that uh, controls whether or not the rod is being pushed out or being uh, pulled in. And it's not powered right now. There's a manual button uh, right here that you can push that will uh, switch the valve uh, and either make it open or close depending on how you have these hoses hooked up. So right now, it's under pressure. It's on the shop air just temporarily. Uh, I've got these arranged, these uh, these two outlets arranged so that in its default unpowered state, the solenoid is not being powered, it's pushing the air, air pressure coming in, it's pushing the rod out, which is closing the door. So when I push this button, the air pressure should basically be reversed. The valve opens, uh, opens one and closes the other. The pressure is reversed and the rod is pushed or pulled uh, in. No, it would be pushed in because the air pressure is pushing it in. Anyway, and the other thing is I've got these um, these needle valves on here. So when you uh, w when the valve switches, uh, it exhausts the other the opposite end out. And default, it's actually pretty quick. When I was playing with it on the bench, uh, it's pretty quick. So I've got these down. So that's all the way. I'm going to start off with them all the way because that should be the slowest uh, for it to both basically open the door and close the door. So anyway, so you adjust, you can adjust these valves to make it basically make it open or shut uh, pretty much as fast as you want. And I'm going to have it tuned so it opens fairly quickly. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if I was not careful, this could probably rip uh, itself off the door, but I'm going to have it shut almost as slowly as, as it possibly can, because in that way there's time. If uh, something's in the way, a dog uh, is in the way, that it can get out of the way before it shuts all the way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this now. That, that's cool. So that's working exactly how my little uh, PVC and uh, conduit mock-up was working, uh, opening anyway, so let's close it. Okay. Okay, so that's that's the closed one. So I'm gonna have it open a little bit faster. I don't know how fast this is gonna be. This is a little, yeah. that's 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 too fast. So I'm gonna so closing. That's probably that's all the way down. So that's as slow as it can go, and that's probably where I'm gonna keep it. Uh, so I adjusted the the opening down. Uh, so a little too fast. It's just sort of finding that, that balance. So that's, that's, that's pretty good. It's nice when something works the way you tested it. Okay, so this is probably excessive, but um, I didn't like the bracket uh, just being uh, screwed into the, uh, the two by three that's back uh, behind the, the uh, aluminum sheet here. So I made up this bracket. Uh, the bracket itself is screwed in uh, in several places along the uh, door and then I drilled and tapped uh, this is just some flat bar uh, and drilled and tapped some uh, holes uh, to uh, actually attach the bracket on. So it's the brackets attached to the metal and then the, the load is sort of spread across the door and then I made up a similar bracket you can actually see this is basically almost made up in a similar manner um, just drilled some holes for 
uh, for it to mount on the wall there and then drilled and tapped some holes for the actual brackets uh, to mount to. up here in the attic of the lab and it's cramped and a little bit dark but that is the tank for the doggy door actuator and it's connected directly to the lab air compressor and if you're wondering why this is up here in the attic amongst all the stored items and decorations and everything else that's up here and I'll link to a video that explains why it's up here and how it's controlled and everything uh, down below and also in the corner I think that's the right corner anyway but that is the tank. You saw me modify it a little bit uh, earlier in the video and make the mount. It's just a tank from Harbor Freight, so fairly inexpensive. Took off all the valves and everything it came with and added the regulator to regulate the pressure going to the doggy door actuator. And then added the moisture trap to filter the air coming into the tank. And then that opaque line is what goes down to the actuator. And that blue line is what's coming from the air compressor to fill it. So let's go over to the left and I'll show you how that's connected. Okay, so this red line here is what's coming from the air compressor. That just gets teed off. Uh, and then this blue line that goes straight down goes down to the lab uh, for just the regular lab air. And then this guy right here is a one-way check valve. And then it's just elbowed uh, off and goes to the line for the air tank. The one-way valve is important because that lets air go into the tank but not come out. So that way when I drain the main air compressor, the uh, doggy door tank can still stay uh, filled with air. Because right, right now this is empty, but there's still a little bit of pressure in there. Uh, that way I don't have to constantly be worrying about having this uh, on and filled. Uh, I can drain it and just leave this pressurized for the doggy door itself. I don't think the usage of the doggy door will be such that I'll have to worry about filling this all that often. You can get quite a few opening and closing cycles with it filled uh, before you have to fill it again. But uh, if it's a problem or anything, then I just turn on the air compressor and that will fill up. So there you go. All right, so we're back downstairs. And if you can see this piece of conduit right here that's coming from uh, upstairs, it goes down and over and then the airline eventually pops out of it. I just put it in the conduit just because it was actually easier than using a bunch of zip ties to mount the floppy uh, airline to the wall and everything, and then it just protects a little bit, but that just comes down here into the actuator. So, tank is up in the attic, right over there. Airline comes down inside that conduit, and then goes into the actuator.
So now is a good time to talk about the electronics and the operation of the doggy door. Now, I was originally going to have it fully automated so that the door would open and close automatically. So when a dog would approach the door, it would open and then close automatically. But I decided against that for a couple of reasons. The first uh, primary is safety. Even at the low pressure setting that I have it at, the pneumatic actuator puts out enough force when closing that I was concerned about something getting caught between the door and the jam. And the second reason was for security, because if it was fully automated, I would have had to have come up with a way to detect and program the system so that it only opened the doggy door when I wanted it to, mostly when I or someone else who was authorized was in the lab. So I decided to make it semi-automated so that it required some presence of mind when it was being operated. So how it works is that there will be a motion sensor outside and when it's triggered, a uh, light in the shop will come on as well as a buzzer to let me know that there's a dog that wants to be let in the lab. At that point, I can either use the manual push button or the echo by saying echo doggy door open to open it. And then the system will wait a period of time. I think I have it set for 30 seconds at the moment and then it will automatically close the door However, if motion is detected by either the motion sensor outside or the one that will be inside, the door will reopen and the close timer will reset. I can also manually close the door with either the button or the echo, but the same applies. If motion is detected by uh, either motion sensor inside or outside, the door will reopen and the uh, auto close timer will reset. The electronics are pretty simple. There's an ESP32 microcontroller, which I used because it has Wi-Fi and the pin count I need. And then there are some solid state relays to control the solenoid valve for the actuator and ones to control the indicator lights and the buzzer. Now the ESP32 requires 3.3 volts and the solenoid and lights and buzzer require 24 volts to operate. Now there's a 12 volt version of the solenoid valve but I use the 24 volt one because it requires less current to operate. It was easier and cheaper to find a power supply that would output 24 and five volts than it was 24 and 3.3. So I went with the 24 volt and five volt version because the ESP32 has an onboard regula regulator that can step down to five volts to the required 3.3. There's some current limiting resistors on the microcontroller side of the relays to keep the pin current draw within the limits of the ESP32 and the relays themselves. The LEDs on the board are there mostly for troubleshooting so that while programming, I didn't have to have all the devices connected to make sure the relays were turning on and off when they were supposed to. The PIR sensors are neat. They operate from a programming perspective the same way switch or push button does. You power them with three to five volts and connect the output pin to any one of your microcontroller's digital pins. And then it's just a matter of programming with the same digital read high or low that you would a switch or a push button. Uh, the only gotcha, if it really is one, is that the output stays high for about a half a second or so when it detects motion. So if it detects motion and that motion goes away, the output will stay high for a bit. Uh, it's not a big deal, but uh, it is something to be a aware of and you could always program around it if you uh, if it was an issue. Now I 3D printed the enclosures for the PIR sensors as well as the main electronics mostly just for fun no particular reason. Now the outside PIR sensor will be outside and the enclosure is printed in PLA which isn't the best for that but I'm going to paint it and just see what happens if any water or whatever gets in uh, the most it will hurt is the PR sensor which is six bucks on the cover uh, I'll put some silicone around it before closing it up uh, with the screws so the electronics are pretty simple all the real magic happens in the programming and for the echo control I am using a library since I'm in the lab uh, I'll just call it the ESP Echo Library and put the real name of it on screen so I don't trigger the lab's echo. Anyway, if you've seen my Shop Improvements Part 4 video, you'll know that in that case I use the Foxmo Library for the echo control. In this case, because I can manually control the door 
uh, outside of the Echo. Um, I really wanted to be able to tell the Echo what the state of the door was um, if it was manually operated so that it would react appropriately if it was used later on to open or close the doggy door. And when I tried with the Foxmo library before to manually set the state uh, of the device either on or off, it, I just I couldn't get it to work. Whereas with the ESP Echo library, it was really easy to do. And I kind of feel like that the development of the Foxmo library has stalled a bit. So the ESP Echo library seems like it's still being really uh, developed and uh, and maintained um, and it was just in this case easier to use so I'll post a link to the code um, in the description in case you want to take a take a look it's written as a state machine and it's probably pretty terrible but it does work So I've created my own version of the most useless machine in the world. So the door is open right now. It's gonna try and close here in a second and we'll uh, watch and see what happens. Yeah. The motion sensor I have right there for safety is being tripped by the door. So then it reopens like it's supposed to do, but it's also supposed to close, which it's not. So I'm gonna have to move that. All right, so it's been a little while since uh, that last clip that you saw, and I've done a few things to uh, make it so that I'm almost done with <clears throat> the doggy door here. Uh, one of the things is I added the manual open and close buttons. They're just uh, mounted to a piece of thin uh, MDF underneath the bench here, and the wires go back to the control box there. Uh, it's recessed back a little bit, so if I'm leaning on the bench, doesn't, I don't accidentally push them. Added the indicator light, you see there. We'll see how that works in a minute. And the other thing I did was I actually solved the problem that you saw in the last clip with the motion sensor preventing the door from closing. So originally I had the motion sensor mounted in this box that was mounted there on the bench. And I thought that that would be enough clearance uh, between the bottom of the door and the motion sensor. And if the detection area on the motion sensor were a straight beam, that would be the case, but it's more cone-shaped. So even mounted right here, physically below the bottom of the door, uh, it was still within the de detection area of the motion sensor. So first I tried to move it back underneath the bench uh, to sort of bias it more to just things that were down in this area, but it still uh, tripped. The only reason I can think of that it was doing that is maybe the temperature difference between the outside and inside the lab when the door was closing, it was moving air around, causing the sensor to think that it was seeing motion. What I did to fix that is I added a brake beam sensor here on the inside, uh, one on the inside and one on the outside. So these are the same sorts of things that if you've ever been in a convenience store or 7-Eleven or whatever, and you've got that ding ding as you walked by the door, that's basically what's being used. And that's shooting a beam of light across, hitting that reflector, and then being reflected back to it. And if the beam is broken, in this case, the way I have this one configured, if the beam is broken, it turns on a relay that's mounted in a case up underneath the bench here. And then that relay uh, is used to set the pin high or low, depending on if the beam is broken or not. So these brake beam sensors are a uh, nine, I believe, to three volt device. 
Um, I'm feeding them 24 volts from the power supply that's powering the solenoid valve and the lights and everything else. And then I used the relay. I had, them, had the relays on hand. It was just the quickest way of interfacing the, the sensor with the ESP32, because uh, obviously you can't feed the ESP32 24 volts directly. The other thing, and I'll go ahead and I'll open the door with the manual button. I also added a brake beam sensor on the outside, inside of the door jam, recessed a little bit to help keep it clean and just help it prevent it from getting snagged on. That's the reflector there. It's recessed too. You can probably hear that. I don't know if you can hear it above the beaming. But that's the relay box for the door jam one. So fairly simple, just literally just a relay in there. Um, there is on the back of that perf board uh, a diode for back EMF, but the sensor comes in, the uh, brake beam sensor comes in, power comes in from the power supply uh, to power everything, and then uh, comes back and goes to the digital inputs on the ESP. So if anything breaks this beam or anything breaks this beam, then the door won't close. Do that, so I'll manually close it. So if I, and then if I stand right here and I try to close it, you can see. So overall, let me actually close it here so I can get rid of that beeping. So overall, uh, I think that, that actually, uh, with the brake beam sensors, especially the one in the door jam, I think that that increases the safety of it uh, to just to ensure that nothing is uh, gonna get caught in the door as it's closing. Keep in mind also that I've got the outside motion sensor. This is primarily uh, there just to let me know if something is outside that wants to be let in, but this also will uh, prevent the door from closing if it detects uh, motion. I'm hoping I don't have similar issues with this one as I did with the other one. Don't think I will. Um, it obviously isn't in the path of the door or anything, or it won't be. Uh, so yeah, so that's one of the last things I have to do is mount that, do some painting here on the inside. It's still too crappy to finish the painting uh, of the trim on the outside. Probably have to wait until uh, summer or something like that in order to do that. Uh, but yeah, and then it's almost done. So there's the motion sensor mounted above the door. Maybe able to hear it beeping in there. I'm not sure I'm setting it off, but uh, yeah, we'll see how long the, uh, the PLA lasts. Should be interesting. Yeah, there you go. So when the dog comes up, a little deck there, that'll go, that'll detect them and then beep and flash the light letting me know that one of the dog want, dogs wants in the, in the lab. Alexa, dog door open. Come on, handsome boy. Come on, that's a good boy. All right, the doggy door is finally finished. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this is completely unnecessary. There's no reason why this had to be made to be open using a pneumatic actuator, or an echo, or anything else for that matter. But these sorts of projects are fun, and I hope you enjoyed watching and following along as much as you could. And I will see you on the next one. And it sounds like someone wants in. Alexa, dog door open. Let's see which dog it is. Not you again. Thank you.